This is part 29 of my series on my Engage Model Railway project. Previous parts covered the project from its inception through the creation of the baseboard, selection and laying of track, building of scenic items, obtaining rolling stock, etc. The project is ongoing. Recent parts have featured running video on the layout, but not in this part. This part deals with a kit bash that I did to try to recreate an LMS wagon-mounted loading crane that I had seen in an old photograph. If you watched earlier parts of this series, you may recall that some time ago I picked up a number of LMS furniture removals wagons, uh, containers on flats, and at that time I showed this old photo of a container being loaded onto a flat with a wagon-mounted crane, and mentioned that I would like to have a model of such a crane, but I imagined I would have to build it myself. Well, eventually I did, or at least tried, and that's what this video is about. When I visited British Model Trains in Cambridge, Ontario recently, I picked up several Fleetline white metal kits made in Loughborough, Leicestershire, near my old home, and one end of the Great Central Heritage Railway. I actually got three different crane kits, as they were only a few bucks each, and I thought that they would all be interesting. Inspecting the crane kits, I decided that this one appeared to be the best fit for the LMS crane I was attempting to build. It's a bit confusing what Fleetline want to call this kit. As you can see on the instructions, it says kit number N23 yard crane. But you could only see that after you unpacked the kit and unfolded the instructions. The label on the packaging of the kit says NL6 Midland Medium Yard Crane Floor Mounted. So if you wanted to buy this kit, I'm not sure if you'd ask for N23 or NL6. In any case, this is what came with the kit. A set of simple instructions, mainly depending on a diagram, nine white metal parts, and two pieces of straight wire. Here's more of a close-up of the parts. A base, two gears, a ratchet, a spindle, two sides to the crane frame, a hook, a jib, and the two pieces of straight wire. One bronze-coloured and slightly thicker and shorter, the other longer, thinner and silver. I concluded that this was how the wire pieces were intended to be used. The longer, thinner one makes the supports for the jib, and the shorter, thicker wire makes the cranking axle and handles. I drilled the holes in the cranking gear and the head of the jib myself, since these parts didn't come with holes in them, using a pin vise and a, a very small bit. The crane hook can be seen at back right. The piece of wire through the bottom of the jib for pivoting the jib in the frame came installed, as you see it here. Here I'm test assembling the pieces without any gluing. I bent a crank handle onto one end of the crank axle, but left the other end straight for now, as I still want to take everything apart again. Now I've test installed the jib. This is pretty much how everything is intended to go together. The jib is intended to sit like this, with the ends of the support wires hooked into the holes at the top of the frame. Now I had to think about how to mount this crane on a wagon in a manner as similar to the old photo as I could manage. I used a Pico 9-foot wagon kit for the base wagon. Specifically, this was KNR 209, a 9-foot 20-ton BR pig iron wagon kit. I assembled it as intended by Pico, except that I left off the side walls of the wagon, since there don't seem to be there shouldn't be any side walls for this crane wagon. See part twenty-four of this series for for a detailed build of a Pico nine-foot wagon kit. The main thing that I had to fabricate was some sort of approximation to the counterweight system, since the crane requires an adjustable counterweight to be able to function on a wagon, but nothing of the kind came with the Fleetline kit, as that was intended to be floor-mounted. Here you can see the counterweight system on the real crane, and my somewhat approximate attempt to recreate it. I used styrene sheet, piano wire, and some pieces cut from sprue. I made an extension to the crane base from thicker styrene sheet, I drilled a small hole in the end of this, and in the back of the crane base, and I filed down the back of the crane base flat. 
Then I inserted a small piece of piano wire into the two holes to reinforce the join between the original crane base and my extension, and glued everything together with cyanoacrylate superglue. Then I cut side rails from thin styrene sheet and glued them onto each side with styrene glue. I made a weight from several pieces of thicker styrene sheet glued together and glued on rollers made from thin pieces of uh, round sprue. Finally, another piece of styrene sheet on the end and a piece of piano wire approximated the shaft for adjusting the position of the weight. It's all a bit crude, but I'm working in a very small scale here and my abilities uh, with fine work are somewhat limited. Next, I needed to finalise the attachment of the jib. I had threaded the thin wire that came with the kit through a small hole drilled in the end of the jib. Now I cut one end of that wire down to make the length of the two sides match, as I hadn't managed to bend it exactly centrally originally. Then I bent angles into the each end of the jib support wire so that the ends could be hooked into the holes in the top of the crane frame. And this is starting to look something like what I was aiming for. In hindsight, I probably should have made the weight more truly functional as a weight, as it really needed to counterbalance the weight of the jib. White metal is quite heavy. Still, in terms of appearance, it's getting there. As you can see, I have a flat wagon with a furniture container on it on the bench. I needed that to check that the jib was actually coming out at a reasonable height and overhang to be used for lifting the container onto the wagon. The other end of the winding axle is still straight, as everything is intended to come apart again here. Once a handle is bent onto that end, it won't really be possible to disassemble things easily. Here I've added two piano wire braces connecting the back of the counterweight system to the sides of the main frame, again as in orig the original picture. When I tried the crane like this turned sideways on the wagon, it wasn't at all stable as the counterweight being made just of styrene really wasn't counterbalancing. In an attempt to fix that issue, I put some lead tape onto the top of the counterweight, as you can see here. Next, I took the crane off the wagon and painted it. Well, I painted the wagon itself, actually, as well. Painted the wagon grey and weathered it. Uh, I sprayed the crane with grey primer first, then painted everything with a bronze colour. Of course, the hook and its cable haven't been installed yet. You can see the hook at left here, painted dark metallic and attached to a fine thread. Here I'm just trying the position of the crane again, in terms of lifting a container onto a wagon to make sure that it looks about right. Another view with pretty much all the pieces in place now, the hook still at the back. I weathered things a bit by washing with mineral spirits in black enamel to make everything look suitably worn and grimy. Now I have mounted the cable and hook. Even using the finest thread I had available, it doesn't really hang straight properly. This is a problem with working in a very small scale. It's just hard to get a flexible thread to, 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 to sit straight enough. Here's the non-flash version of that view, which honestly looks better. Flash does tend to overexpose detail and reveal flaws that wouldn't normally be noticeable. So, finally, it's time to try to replicate the crane in action. It is possible to crank the handle and to lower and raise the hook and to hold it in position with the ratchet. The Pico models of the containers include the basic loading straps on each side. I've passed thread under the roof and tried to line it up with the straps the way the containers were originally lifted. So you can see a comparison here between what I've managed to put together and the original picture. So I think this is the closest I'm going to get. It would be nice to get more detail, but there's a limit to what I can manage in such a small scale. I mean, this is 1 to 148, and when I was doing aircraft modeling, I used to consider 1 to 72 a pretty small scale. I was using magnifying spectacles and tweezers much of the time, and pretty much all the time during this whole process. 
As a final touch, here's the crane together with an Oxford Diecast LMS furniture lorry, which I just picked up. So, there you go. The kit bash to create the LMS furniture, uh, LMS wagon loading crane.